that's a good Christmas to do. And it's going to be a short Christmas day service. It won't last very long. Uh, so, but if you show up at 1030 here, well, you just have to be people here. You just fellowship for a while. But you are not. So you work in the kitchen. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, because you can work in the kitchen. <laughs> and so anyway, uh, church is 1130 and the dinner at 12. The service will be downstairs? <clears throat> yes, church will be down in the basement, in the fellowship hall, in the basement. Okay. Have we forgotten anything? Probably, but oh well. Uh, I'm glad you're all here today. What dinner supper is yet to be served? Okay. Just Wednesday night supper is yet to be determined, depending on the weather. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's community choir uh, It sings today at 4 p.m. here. And so come and be blessed by that. All right. Anything else? Choir? Stand to your feet. Greet your neighbor. Oh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good morning. Merry Christmas, Bob. Merry Christmas to you. Declared to be the 
Son of God, with the power according to the Spirit, of holiness by resurrection from the dead. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. We belong to him, ordained in faith for the sake of his name. Then we shall never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Jesus is coming. Prepare for the way of the Lord. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. Jesus is coming, and he will save us from our sins. Shine your light, the Lord, and we shall be saved. Our opening song is Come Upon the Midnight Clear.
like a clock. You are in control of your own. Shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manahay. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us. O oh God, let your face shine. That we may be saved. Our Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears of tears to drink in full measure. You make us the sport of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us. O oh God of hosts, let your face shine, that we may be saved. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will come, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord, O Lord God our of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved.
the ushers come forward to receive this morning's tithes and offerings. Let us pray. Lord God, you have blessed us with so much. So this Christmas season, Lord, and change our hearts to that of one, not as uh, one who receives, but one who gives. Lord, may we be a blessing to a dark world seeking light. In Jesus' name. Jesus, and 
and reflected on our own lineage. Today's sermon is titled, Jesus Comes to Us from the Story. We've been reflecting on the family story of Jesus, and the fact that Jesus likes us comes from someone, a people, somewhere, comes from a place, and something, a story. Today on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we're going to talk about the family story from which Jesus comes, a story of covenant made between the creator of the universe and humankind. And the fulfillment of that covenant, bond, in the person of the Word made flesh, Jesus, the Son of God. As King of kings and Lord of lords, and as the great high priest of humanity, Jesus fulfills the longing of the human heart for a Savior. Jesus' story is Israel's covenant story. From the Garden of Eden to today, us human beings, we've been made in the image of God, uh, but we have been failing. Ever since creation, mankind has been failing. If, if, this was, if we were in a godless world, we, people might say that we have been failing ourselves, we've been failing each other, we've been failing creation. But that's not true. We do have a God, a creator of the universe. And so in our failings, we ultimately fail God. We recognize as followers of Jesus that humanity has been primarily failing in its relationship with which sets the dominoes in motion for us to fail ourselves, each other, and the creation gifted to us. Into our story of failure to maintain an unbroken and life-fulfilling relationship with our Creator, the covenant-keeping God moves. Through covenant after covenant, loving pursuit after loving pursuit, the Father has restored his covenant with us by taking up our end of the relationship as well. A covenant is when two different people or groups make a bond together by laying out promises to one another. I like to think about one of my business classes I had to take in college called business law. And, and, and this has always stuck with me, is the definition of a contract is much like a covenant. I think covenants are actually the different parts of a contract that make up a whole contract. But within a contract or a covenant, there is offer and acceptance, and then there's also remuneration or payment. In this case, what we're talking about, God offers us salvation through the person of Jesus Christ. That's the offer. And uh, the acceptance is up to us. It's to say yes to Jesus. To make Jesus the Lord of our life. So when there's the offer and acceptance, so what is the payment? Jesus paid it all. He paid the whole tab. He paid the whole bill on the cross at Calvary. I would like to point out that in the story in the Bible, God pursued the people of Israel through different uh, servants. He uh, pursued the people of Israel through Noah through what we call the Noahic Covenant. Remember the whole covenant about, you know, with the, the rainbow set in the clouds that God made this covenant that he would never again destroy uh, 
uh, the people of uh, his people or the earth. Uh, he made a he pursued the people of Israel through uh, Moses, what we call the Mosaic Covenant. You know the law, the Ten Commandments. That's the Mosaic Covenant. God pursued the people of Israel through David, through which we call the Davidic Covenant. Then, at the fullness of time, God pursued all humanity through the covenant of Jesus. The new covenant. God was repairing for all who struggle with God the relationship only one who had, was with both God and human could make. And what I just talked to you about, God has always been pursuing. That's what we call in the Methodist Church provenient grace. God knew us before we knew Him. I want you to think about when you raised your own kids. Uh, and still, even with adult children, I don't I think the circumstances change, but we're still pursuing our children. When they're infants, you know, they are completely, totally dependent. On, on their parents, on especially their mother, for their every, every need. Then when they move on into toddlers, you know, then they become more active. Then you're really pursuing them. Then you're chasing after them all the time. Uh, you know, we've got these two grandsons. Well, we actually have three grandsons and now one granddaughter, but. The two oldest grandsons are toddler age. Well, actually, Oliver's about four and a half, and Oakley is two and a half. And this last summer, those two little outlaws were outside with their mom, with our daughter Kelly, and Kelly got distracted doing some other things for a little bit. Well, they got this little motorized Jeep thing that the two of them could fit in together. And Little guys know how to drive the thing. Well, when Kelly wasn't looking, they were off down the road, uh, headed towards the other, the other set of grandparents that just lived like a quarter of a mile away. And they actually got down there, and before Kelly realized it, and so off she goes. And uh, after that, well, when they got there, they figured out that the other grandparents were not home, so they were started out the driveway headed towards the great-grandparents. <laughs> I mean, scary. Thank God, the providence of God, nothing happened with them. But it's like we're always chasing after our kids, even when they know that they're not doing right. Well, the little motorized Jeep got put up for a while. <laughs> <laughs> but just God is always pursuing us when we're... Uh, our kids are teenagers, you know, and uh, ball games and school activities. We're always pursuing them. And then, you know, in their work life and in their college life, when they become adults, it seems like back in the day when we were little kids, my grandparents lived away from us. And we all packed up in dad's big car and went to see the grandparents. No longer today, the grandparents go to the kids because the kids' lives are so filled with work and school and activities. That's the only way it's going to work in today's society. Now, if you want to be an active part in the kids' life. And so that's the way it is with God. God is always pursuing us. And he never stops. Jesus came from something. A covenant story of his people that reaches in its long and elegant plot line to you and to me and to everyone around us. That's what Advent and Christmas is truly about. Jesus' story is humanity's covenant story. When Mary sings this song of joy, 
pregnant with her child, uh, Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, she recounts in brief the story of Israel and all of humanity. It's fascinating that many of us read the Advent and Christmas story as if it was a story that was meant only for those who faithfully follow Jesus. But it's not that small of a story. The Advent story and the Christmas story is a larger story than that. It's a story uh, that includes not only us, but it, in, it includes everyone around us. Christmas is the story of your neighbor, your co-worker, your cousin, your friend, your fellow human beings across time and space. It's the story of God reaching through the millennium of time, through Jesus, to you, to me, and to all who will recognize his unrelenting covenant love for them and will say yes. There is a yes that many human beings have yet to say to Jesus. There's a yes that many humans have yet to say God, uh, the God who loved them and knew them before they ever took the first breath. The simple yes is what begins the transformation, the renewal and healing of the human heart, leading us to become who we're meant to be, but also to lead others to that same fullness and abundance of life. We're talking about here making Jesus the Lord of our life, to making him our Savior, to receiving Jesus, asking for forgiveness. Jesus' story is your covenant story. This is where Advent, this season of anticipation and hope, that Christ will meet us once again this year, reveals Christmas. You are the name on God's lips when he speaks of the covenant story that came to its fulfillment in our Lord Jesus Christ. You are the one that he calls by name. You are the one who he knows the very hairs on your head that are numbered by God. You are the one from whom Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, came to reveal himself. Yes, the covenant story that finds its fulfillment in the Word made flesh is truly Israel's story, our story, and the story of the world. This season, I want you to own that story. Own it, embrace it as your story. A way has been made for you to come into the wholeness that only the love of God can bring in your life. You know, many of us may have said yes to Jesus 40, for me, almost 50 years ago. What we believe here in the, in the Methodist Church and many other churches is a means of grace called sanctification, the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is continuing to work in our lives, and I think that it's important that we not rely on what happened 40, maybe 50 years ago. But we say yes to Jesus again and anew in this Christmas and Advent season. A refreshing of the spirit, if you will. We're always moving into areas of darkness because of the way that uh, we lead our lives today, we fail God in <coughs> sin, and it's perfectly, I mean, because we're human beings. So that's why it's important <coughs> that is this Advent season that's been called the long dark night of the soul, that we move from that area of darkness into Christ's wonderful light. If you say yes 
to the covenant law that has been pursuing you your entire life, again, this season, you'll be opening yourself to meet with God in profound and new ways in this new year ahead. We are bearers of the covenant story with humanity in which God is the loving pursuer of the heart. And we are the pursued. Could we begin to take the essential message of that story, that you and I are loved by the creator of the universe, and that he has come in the flesh and blood, so that we can know that God knows our name, he knows our needs, he knows what our struggles are, folks, and he can give us hope. Jesus is the name God goes by at Christmas. And it is in Jesus that you, your family, your neighbors, your co-workers, and the world will find the life for which we are looking. Blessings to you as we move from the anticipation that is Advent into the celebration of Christmas. Light has come into the world, and the darkness has not overcome it. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. <clears throat> Our final hymn is number 240, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Will You Stand?